the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution hello children how do you do hope you are healthy and happy i think you would have gone through the previous part related to photosynthesis and i think you would have understood about it very nicely dear children don't take any tension i told you if you are not able to understand it please give me a call so that i can help you be cool be happy so now the second part of that chapter we are going to understand and here we are going to understand about chemical osmotic hypothesis this hypothesis is put forward to explain atp synthesis in the protoplast so here the hypothesis is being there to explain how atp is synthesized in protoplast and it requires a membrane system a proton pump a proton gradient and atpase enzyme so the formation of atp synthesis requires a membrane system a proton pump a proton gradient and atpase enzyme now a proton gradient occurs in the lumen of thylakoid so what is happening there a proton gradient that is difference in the accumulation of proton is taking place in the lumen of thylakoid in the chloroplast now the proton gradient is broken due to the movement of proton from the lumen to the stroma through atpase enzyme so how the proton gradient is broken it is being broken by the movement of proton from the thylakoid lumen to the stroma and it is being taking place through atpase enzyme so atpase enzyme is helping for the movement of or transportation of proton or h plus ion from the lumen of thylakoid to the stroma and because of the movement of this proton which is taking place through atpase enzyme at that time lump sum amount of energy is released and that energy is utilized there for the synthesis of atp we can see how it is taking place the energy obtained is utilized in the synthesis of atp from atp with the help of atpase enzyme so this is the chloroplast and here we can see this is the thylakoid membrane isn't it and this is the lumen okay and this is stroma so in the thylakoid lumen you can see the amount of proton present is more when compared to the amount of proton present in the stroma so as there is the proton gradient in this because of that what happened the atpase enzyme is present there which is helping for the transportation of the proton from the lumen to the stroma and when the proton is passing through this atpase enzyme surely what is happening there atp synthesis is taking place from that is from atp to atp so this is how atp is synthesized in the chloroplast or we can say during the process of photosynthesis now we can see what is proton gradient and what is causing proton gradient okay so within the chloroplast in stroma the protons decreases in number in the stroma the proton is decreasing there and 
The accumulation of proton is taking place in the lumen of thylakoid. But in the case of lumen, the more number of proton is being accumulated. Because of that, what happens? A gradient is taking place across the thylakoid membrane. And what is causing this type of accumulation as well as decreases in the number in the stroma related to proton, we can see that is causes of proton gradient. Number one, splitting of water. We know that when non cyclic photophosphorylation took place, that time splitting of water took place, isn't it? And this splitting of water is taking place on the inner side of the thylakoid membrane. Inner side of the thylakoid membrane that is in the lumen of thylakoid. And the HLS ion produced from splitting of water accumulate within the thylakoid membrane. So, what is happening when the water is being splitting there, that time proton and electron is produced there, and this proton is being accumulated in the lumen itself. Now, number two. As the electrons move through the photosystem in the Z scheme, the protons are transported across the membrane that is from stroma to lumen. So during the Z scheme when the electron or we can say when the proton are transported, what happens? The proton is being transported from stroma to the lumen. So from the stroma to the lumen when the proton is being transported, so in the stroma the proton is decreasing. And in the lumen, the protons are increasing. And the third one, protons are necessary for the reduction of NADP plus 2, NADPH2. So these protons are also removed from the trauma side. So we know that during non cyclic photophosphorylation, NADPH2 is produced there from NADP plus. So for the protection of NADPH2, protons are needed there. And these protons, they are removed from the stroma side during this process. In this manner, what happens? A proton gradient is created in the chloroplast, that is in the thylakoid membrane. Now, what is ATPase? It is a transmembrane protein and it consists of two parts, F0 particle as well as F1 particle. F0, it is embedded in the thylakoid membrane, isn't it? F0 is embedded in the thylakoid, this is ATPase itself. Understood? Got it? And F0, it is seen in the, or it is present there in the thylakoid, it is embedded in the thylakoid membrane. It forms a transmembrane channel and it carries out facilitated diffusion of proton. What is F1 particle? It is found on the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane and attached to the F0 particles. F0 and F1 particles, they are connected to each other and they are the parts of ATPase enzyme. It faces towards the stroma. F1 particle is facing towards the stroma. Okay, now synthesis of ATP molecule, how it is taking place? The breakdown of proton gradient. That is, due to the movement of proton from the lumen to stroma provides energy to cause a change in the F1 particle of the ATPase enzyme. How ATP is synthesized? When the proton gradient is broken down, that time lump sum amount of energy is produced there which is causing changes in the F1 particle. And because of that, ATP is Synthesized, that is, it activates the enzyme to synthesize energy rich ATP molecules. So, the change which is taking place in F1 particle is activating it, and that is, the enzyme is activated there, and because of that, the ATP molecule is synthesized. I think you would understood, you can see here, this is the area where ATP is synthesized as ATPs enzyme is present here, and from the lupin when the proton is transported through this ATPase enzyme, that time we can see from ADP and inorganic phosphate ATP is synthesized. I think you would have understood about any osmotic hypothesis. Clearly, it is very very important, my dear children, you have to study it 
very very important related to the exam point now next products of light reaction the end product of light reaction are atp nadph and oxygen so during the light reaction the end products are produced there and they are atp nadph and oxygen and these three are produced during the non cyclic photophosphorylation of these oxygen diffuses out of the chloroplast among these oxygen will be moving out of the chloroplast and nadph as well as atp they are used in the dark reaction or biosynthetic reaction these two are the important substances which are used there are energy rich compound these are the two energy rich compound which are utilized in the biosynthetic reaction now that ends the light reaction or photochemical reaction now we are in the second part of photosynthesis and that is biosynthetic phase or dark reaction it is also known as c3 cycle or kelvin cycle this is the second phase in which carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate so in this phase what is happening carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate and this phase is taking place in stroma it is also called carbon assimilation or co2 assimilation and the first product of dark reaction is a three carbon compound therefore it is also called c3 cycle or kelvin cycle kelvin is a melvin kelvin is the name of the scientist who discovered this cycle therefore the name of the cycle came as kelvin cycle c3 means the first product formed during this cycle is three carbon compound therefore the name c3 cycle came there now it depends on the product of light reaction this cycle is dependent on the products of light reaction that is atp as well as nadph2 is utilized in this cycle we can see the first product of dark reaction is the three carbon organic compound that is 3 phosphoglycic acid which is also known as pga by dear children this is very very important again in the question paper it used to come as name the first product produced in c3 cycle so the answer is 3 phosphoglycic acid or it is also known as pga the full form of pga is to ask in the question paper so here you can see light dependent reaction which is called kelvin cycle and it is taking place in the stroma of chloroplast here what is happening carbon enters as carbon dioxide and leaves a uh, sugar and the cycle spends atp and consumes nadph as a using power so this reaction or this cycle consists of three phases one is carbon fixation second one is reduction and third one is rubp regeneration three phases are there or you can say three steps are there in the kelvin cycle or c3 cycle the first one is carbon fixation or carboxylation process number two reduction process and number three rubp regeneration process the first one is carbon fixation or carboxylation process where carbon dioxide enters through stomata and diffuses to stroma this carbon dioxide combines with rubp that is ribulose biphosphate it is a five carbon compound and when this ribulose biphosphate is combining with carbon dioxide six carbon compound product is formed there and it is unstable it is intermediate product it is unstable so this six carbon compound or unstable product is converted to two three carbon compound that is called glycerate three phosphate two molecules of two molecules of three carbon compound is produced there that is called glycerate three phosphate or it is known as glyceraldehyde three phosphate and here ribulose 
or we can say RBP carboxyl carboxylase or Rubisco is the enzyme which is catalyzing this reaction. Rubisco or RBP carboxylase is the enzyme which is catalyzing the carboxylation process where the atmospheric carbon dioxide is combining with RUVP that is called ribulose biphosphate and ribulose biphosphate is a 5 carbon compound and in that manner 6 carbon compound product is formed there it is unstable soon this unstable product is converted to 2 molecules of 3 phosphoglycic acid and this complete process is being dealt by the enzyme called Rubisco or RUBP carboxylase. I think the first phase of the reaction of Kelvin cycle is that understood. Now the second phase is reduction. Here what is happening? It is been said that the ATP which is an energy it is utilized to reduce three carbon compound that is G3P to triose phosphate and this reaction is also requires proton and it is coming from NADP and therefore NADP is reduced and recycled to NADP again. So triose phosphate is produced there, isn't it? Triose that is phase 2 reduction phase and here from the Two, uh, two molecules of 3 carbon compound in that one part of 3 carbon compound this aldehyde 3 phosphate from there a triose phosphate is produced there during this process therefore this process or this phase is known as reduction phase as H plus is required there it is coming from the reduction of NADP isn't it NADPH here you can see NADPH is being reduced to NADP plus. Okay. Now the third phase that is the regeneration phase where RADP is regenerated because RADP is an important compound needed for the first phase that is carboxylation phase. So RADP has to be regenerated and it has been said that 6 triphosphate is being produced there during reduction process and out of 6 triphosphate 5 isn't it 5 out of 6 triphosphate is being used there for the regeneration of RUBP so triose out of 6 triphosphate that is 5 out of 6 triphosphate is used there for the regeneration of RUBP and in this manner, RUBP will be regenerated. Again, the cycle will be taking place there where carbon dioxide will be combined with RUBP for the next process taking place in Kelvin cycle. This cycle is very, very important, my dear children. You have to study it here. You can see NADPH as well as ATP. Both these energy rich compounds are utilized there in the process of Kelvin cycle or dark reaction or sickle cycle. This is again I am telling you it is very very important you have to go through the cycle and you have to understand it. Now next one the primary acceptor of CO2 is a 5 carbon compound that is ribose by You can see the cycle here. Phase 1, carbon fixation phase, phase 2, reduction phase and phase 3, regeneration phase. Here you can see carbon dioxide is combining with ribulose biphosphate to form a unstable product and soon that unstable product will be converted to a stable first product and that is 3 phosphoglycerate or PGA and during the conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate to 1 3 biphosphoglycerate that time ATP is utilized there for the production of ADP. Now, 1,3-biphosphoglycerate is converted to glycerinhydrate phosphate. During that time, NADPH is utilized there for the production of NADP plus, and this glycerinhydrate phosphate is a three-carbon compound and it is six 
molecule among the three carbon compound six molecule plus dihydride three phosphate one plus dihydride three phosphate will be going for the preparation of glucose as well as other organic compounds and the remaining five plus dihydride three phosphate is there which is being used there for the regeneration process of RUBT and again RUBT is produced there which is the utilizing carbon dioxide for the next cycle of the reaction. So this cycle is like the independent reaction and here ATP is utilized there as well as NADPH is also utilized there. It is very very important process my dear children. You have to study this part very nicely. This cycle is important. Now it is being separated with that C3 cycle. For every CO2 molecule entering the Kelvin cycle, three molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADPH are required. Whenever the Kelvin cycle is taking place, carbon dioxide molecule is needed there and each carbon dioxide molecule needs three molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADPH. Now the next cycle is C4 pathway which is also known as Hatch and Slate pathway. The first stable product formed in this pathway is oxaloacetic acid which is also known as OAA which is again important and this oxaloacetic acid is a 4 carbon compound. Since the first stable product is a 4 carbon compound therefore the pathway is known as C4 pathway. As oxaloacetic acid is a first stable product and it is a C4 compound that is in the structure of oxaloacetic acid, 4 carbon are present there. That's why this cycle is also known as C4 pathway. And this pathway is taking place in sugarcane, sorghum, maize, amaranthus, etc. In such plant, this C4 pathway is taking place. You can see the special feature of C4 pathway. Here you can see they have a special type of leaf anatomy. They tolerate high temperature. They show a response to high light intensity. And they lack the process called photoregulation. And they have a greater productivity of biomass. This is the special feature of C4 cycle. Again I will repeat. They are having a special type of leaf anatomy. They tolerate higher temperature and they are showing a response to high light intensities and they add the process called photorespiration by the productivity of biomass is greater. So this is the cycle where you can see Two organelles or two cells are there. One is the mesophyll cell and the one is the bundle sheet cell. Two cells are involved there in C4 cycle. And here you can see carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is being absorbed there. And phospho, that is phospho in all five weight is there formed there. And the fixation of this part is taking place and because of the fixation of this part C4 acid is formed there which is the first product formed in C4 cycle and this C4 acid is oxaloacetic acid and this C4 acid is transported to the bundle sheet cell where it is decarboxylated that is from C4 acid the carbon dioxide is removed and during the decarboxylation process what happened the C4 acid is converted to C3 acid and the C3 acid again from the bundle sheet cell is transported to the mesophyll cell where again phosphoenol pyruvic acid is formed there which is ready for the acceptance of carbon dioxide. So this is how this cycle is working in those plants which are doing C4 pathway. So in C4 pathway as it has been said the plants which are doing C4 pathway they are having a special type of leaf anatomy and that leaf anatomy is called as Krebs anatomy. 
you can see here it is the characteristic leaf anatomy or seed for plant and the important feature of plant's anatomy is that besides visible cells they are having some specialized cells and they are called bundle sheet cells so here you can see isn't it so here the visible cell cells are present and with that they are having the bundle sheet cells also present in them and the bundle sheet cells are present in a ring around the vascular bundle this is the vascular bundle and around that bundle sheet cells you can see it are present there and they form a sheet around the vascular bundle the chloroplast of bundle sheet cell is different from that of mesophyll cell in the case of the chloroplast which is present there in the bundle sheet cell and mesophyll cell we can say that the chloroplast which is present there in the bundle sheet cell is different from that of mesophyll cell in the chloroplast of bundle sheet cell the thylakoids are not arranged in the form of stalks or grana such a chloroplast is called a granular chloroplast so in the bundle sheet cells a granular chloroplast is present there therefore they don't have light reaction now on the other hand the chloroplast of mesophyll cell is granular therefore sebo plants contain dimorphic chloroplast so in the mesophyll cell it is taking place that is mesophyll cell grana isn't it a grana chloroplast is present there and that's why it contains dimorphic chloroplast i think you have understood about it so here you can see the general aspect of c4 pathway number 1 when carbon dioxide is entering into the mesophyll cell it is converted to h3o3 now the bicarbonate which is formed here this is the bicarbonate which is formed here so this bicarbonate is reacting with ppp that is phosphorenol pyruvate or we can say phosphorenol pyruvic acid and when it reacts with bicarbonate or bicarbonate when it reacts with ppp c4 acid is formed there which is the first stable product of this cycle and that is oxalo acetate or acetic acid now the c4 again is being getting converted into c4 acid that is malate or aspartate so c4 which is formed here will be transported there it will be converted there into c4 acid that is malate or malic acid and this is being transported to bundle sheet cell now this c4 is decarboxylated and co2 is released and this be taking place where the co2 which we released here it will be leading to the kelvin cycle and this kelvin cycle is accepting the co2 and the kelvin cycle is taking place there and the c4 which is there that c4 after decarboxylation is converted to c3 so c3 acid product product of decarboxylation is transported back to mesophyll cell and the regeneration of the ep is taking place there so c3 which is formed there in the bundle sheet cell is transported back to the mesophyll cell where the regeneration of phosphorenol pyruvic acid is taking place because this phosphorenol pyruvic acid is needed there for combining with bicarbonate to form the c4 acid i think you would have understood about this cycle very clearly my dear children so you can see here again a diagrammatic representation of c4 cycle so this is how the cycle is taking place if you are going through this cycle my dear children it is easy to understand this cycle because nothing is there only you have to understand that two cells are there which are taking part in c4 cycle they are mesophyll cell and bundle sheet cell and number 2 you have to find out the first stable product which is formed there that is oxalo acetic acid and next one the primary acceptor for the carbon dioxide it is the bicarbonic acid which is being combined with phosphorenol pyruvic acid for the formation of oxalo acetic acid i think you would have understood about it clearly
Now the difference between C3 and C4 gland, we can see in the case of C3 it is taking place in mesophyll cell only, but in case of C4, mesophyll cell and partnership cell, both the cells are present there, where CO2 fixation is taking place. In the case of C3 gland, CO2 acceptor is REPP only, but in the case of C4 gland, PCP that is the phosphoenol pyruvic acid in mesophyll cell and REPP in bundle. Bundle sheet set are the CO2 acceptor. So, in the case of C4 plant, in the mesophyll cell, PEP is there, which is accepting the atmospheric carbon dioxide. And in the case of bundle sheet cell, what is happening with the decarboxylation of C4 acid is taking place, carbon dioxide is released there, and that C4, that carbon dioxide is moving into the chemical cycle or C3 cycle where RUB accepting that carbon dioxide. Now here the first product is 3 carbon compound that is PGA and here the first product is 4 carbon compound that is 4-ACA. Here friends anatomy is not present. In the case of C4 friends anatomy is present and in the case of C3 granite is present in the mesophyll cell but in the case of C4 granite is present in mesophyll cell and it is absent in bundle sheet cell. Here the chloroplast is normal, but here the chloroplast is dimorphic because bundle sheet cell and mesophyll cell in both the cases chloroplast is present there. Now the optimum temperature needed for the C3 plant to activate or to go through the C3 cycle is 20 to 23 degrees Celsius. Here it is 30 to 45 degrees Celsius. Here the fixation of CO2 is taking place at 50 parts per million. Here, even less than 10 parts per million. It is less efficient due to high photorespiration. In C3 plant, photorespiration is also taking place. So, this cycle is less efficient. And here, in this case of C4 plant, it is more efficient. That is, C4 cycle is more efficient due to the less photorespiration. And here, in the case of C3 cycle, RUBP carboxylase enzyme is used there for the fixation of carbon dioxide. But in the case of C4 plant, PEP carboxylase and RUBP carboxylase, that is, two enzymes are needed there for the fixation of carbon dioxide. Now, in the case of C3 plants, 18 ATP are used for the synthesis of one glucose molecule. 18 ATP molecules are used there for the synthesis of one glucose molecule. In the case of C4 plant, it consumes 30 ATP for the production of one glucose. And in C3 plant, it is efficient at low carbon dioxide. That is, if the availability of carbon dioxide is low also, C3 cycle will be taking place there. But in the case of C4 plant, it is efficient at higher CO2 that is when carbon dioxide concentration is higher at higher level or the concentration is at the peak then only C4 cycle is taking place there and the example for C3 plants are paddy, wheat, potato and etc. In the case of the example for C4 plant it is sugarcane, maize, sorghum, amaranthus etc. So this is the difference between C3 and C4. My dear children, if you are going through this part itself, I think you will be able to understand about C3 plant as well as C3 cycle, C4 plant as well as C4 cycle. So this is again important. You can see here the difference between C3 plant as well as C4 plant. In the case of C3 plant, you can see mesophyll cells somewhere here and here and the bundle sheet cell is present there. This is the vascular bundle. But in the case of C4 plant, you can see the vascular bundle is there which is surrounded by the bundle sheet cell and the bundle sheet cell is surrounded by the mesophyll cell. So this is the structure of C4 plant which is different from C3 plant. I think now you have understood and it is very clear for you.
Now the next cycle is C2 cycle which is also known as photo respiration. It is a process of uptake of oxygen and production of carbon dioxide in the light. Photo respiration that is light is photo and we know that what is respiration that is carbon dioxide is released and oxygen is taken that is only happening here. And the site for photo respiration is paroxysome in the case of green plants. It is common in C3 plant. In the C3 plants we can see photo respiration and this photo respiration is absent or we can say it is nil in the case of C4 plants. There is neither synthesis of sugar nor ADP. So during photo respiration sugar is not synthesized as well as no ADP formation is taking place. It is it results in the release of carbon dioxide and utilization of ADP. And during the process of photo respiration, what is happening? ATP is utilized and carbon dioxide is released. Therefore, photo respiration is a wasteful process. It is again important in the testing paper. It can ask why photo respiration process is a wasteful process. So you have to write this part that is there is neither synthesis of sugar nor ATP. But the result of this reaction or this cycle is the release of carbon dioxide and utilization of ATP. Isn't it? That's why photorespiration is a wasteful process. You can see the mechanism of photorespiration. It is been said that when light intensity is high, the light reaction of photosynthesis liberates more oxygen. So when light intensity is high, Rubisco favors the oxygenation of RUVP, resulting in the formation of glycolic acid or glyconate, which is a two carbon compound. So, what is happening when the light intensity is high? What happens? More oxygen will be produced there during photosynthesis. That already we know because when the light is to the extreme, photosynthesis will be taking place and the light will be absorbed by the green leaves and photosynthesis is taking place due to which the oxygen is liberated more. Now, when oxygen is liberated more, rubisco which is an enzyme, it will be favoring oxygenation and because of that, two carbon compounds is produced there and that is glycolate or glycolic acid. Now, this initiates photorespiration when glycolate or glycolic acid is produced there that will be initiating photorespiration and it will be inhibiting the normal photosynthesis. However, it is an scavenging process, helps in getting rid of excess of acidity power. Now, the steps of photorespiration power takes place only in the C3 cycle. And it involves the use of chloroplast, mitochondria, and paroxysm. So, in the leaf, chloroplast, mitochondria, and paroxysm. In the cell, chloroplast, mitochondria, and paroxysm. These organs are present there. And these three organs are there for the mechanism of photo respiration. You can see how it is taking place. You can see the diagrammatic representation of CT cycle. Here you can see when the light intensity is high, photosynthesis will be taking place. That time oxygen is evolved and this oxygen is being acid, accepted by ribose 1,5-bisphosphate that is RUBP and that RUBP when, when it is taking this oxygen it is converted to PGA or we can say phosphoglycolate. PGA as well as phosphoglycolate and this phosphoglycolate is converted to glycolate by the release of phosphate and this is taking place in the chloroplast. So when oxygen from the atmosphere is being absorbed by RUBP, two products are formed there. One is PGA and the other one is phosphoglycolate. The phosphoglycolate is soon converted to the stable product and that is glycolate or glycolic acid by the release of phosphate or you can say inorganic phosphate and it is taking place in the chloroplast 
and from there this glycolate is transported to the peroxisome where it is converted to glyoxalate and this glyoxalate again soon getting converted to glycine the conversion of glycolate to glycine is taking place in the peroxisome and this glycine is transported to the mitochondria where the glycine is converted to serine during the conversion of glycine to serine co2 is released as well as nad plus is present there is converted to nad h2 nad is converted to nad h2 all these are two carbon compounds so till glycine we can say that two carbon compound is formed there and during that CO2 is released as well as ammonia is released and NADH2H NAD plus is converted to NADH2. Now in the mitochondria, the glycine is converted to three carbon compound that is serine and the serine is transported back to peroxisome where it is converted to hydroxy pyruvate and so hydroxy pyruvate is converted to glycerate and glycerate is again a three carbon compound during the conversion of hydroxy pyruvate to glycerate NADH2 which is formed here is converted back to NAD plus ok my dear children and glycerate is a three carbon compound and this three carbon compound is transported back to chloroplast where it is converted to PGA which is a 3 carbon compound and during the conversion of glycerate to PGA the ATP is utilized there for the production of ADP so energy is utilized there for the conversion of glycerate to PGA and again what is happening in the chloroplast Kelvin cycle is taking place and during the Kelvin cycle the regeneration of RDP is taking place. Again, the RDP is produced there and it is ready to accept oxygen. Again, the cycle will be going like this. This is how the C2 cycle is taking place in the C3 plants. I think you would have understood about it. Here, three organs are needed there for the cycle to be completed that is chloroplast, paroxysome and mitochondria. I think you have understood about the cycle. Now we have to understand about the features of rubisco enzyme. Already I told you rubisco enzyme is there which is catalyzing the cycle. So we should know what is rubisco enzyme. You can see here rubisco in Kelvin cycle is there isn't it? And that time carbon fixation is acting as a carbon fixation enzyme. Okay, so what is happening when the carbon fixation enzyme it is happening? So surely it will be helping the RUBP to accept carbon dioxide so that the Kelvin cycle will be taking place there. And it is helping for the reduction of RUBP. It is acting as a building acting it is all it is helping for building the sugar. Now, when oxygen concentration is high in the atmosphere, this rubisco will be having more affinity for oxygen compared to carbon dioxide. And what will happen? The photorespiration process will be taking place. Understood instead of C3 cycle, photorespiration that is C2 cycle will be favored there as oxygen concentration is more in the atmosphere. Understood? So what is happening there? Oxidation of RUBP is taking place as well as the breakdown of sugar molecule is taking place there. So that is photorespiration. So it is the enzyme which is helping in photosynthesis as well as it is helping in photorespiration. You can see the visco. When oxygen concentration is more, it is helping for photorespiration which is a base product. When carbon dioxide concentration is more, it will be helping for the photosynthesis where energy is produced. So that is how rubisco is playing an important role in C3 as well as C2.
C2 cycle. We can see related to photorespiration. Photo can compete with carbon dioxide for binding to nubisco, especially when carbon dioxide is low and oxygen is high. Now, when O2 reacts with ribulose 1, 5 by phosphate, the product are 3 phosphoglycerate plus the 2 carbon compound that is 2 phosphoglycolate. This reaction is the basis for the name RUBP carboxylase or oxygenase that is rubisco. Okay, here you can see rubisco is what it is doing. It is doing chemical cycle as well as photorespiration. But this enzyme is depending on the concentration of carbon dioxide as well as oxygen. If the concentration of oxygen is more, it will be doing photorespiration. If the concentration of carbon dioxide is more, it will be doing chemical cycle. I think you would have understood about rubisco. It is the largest protein seen on the earth. Rubisco is the largest protein seen on the earth. Now next is related to factors affecting photosynthesis. There are two factors which is affecting photosynthesis. One is external factor, the other one is internal factor. External factors are light, temperature, carbon dioxide concentration, oxygen concentration and water. Internal factors are chlorophyll content, internal structure of leaf, accumulation of the end products and Blackman's law of limiting factor. These are the factors which are affecting photosynthesis. We can see the next part that is law of limiting factor which is given by F. F. Blackman and he proposed the law of limiting factor. According to Blackman's law of limiting factor it has been said that when a process is conditioned as to its rapidity by a number of separate factors, the rate of process is limited by the phase of slowest factor. During the process of photosynthesis, we know that chlorophyll, water, light, temperature, all these are important factors which are required for the process of photosynthesis. And when the photosynthesis is taking place, if chlorophyll or carbohydrate, sorry, if chlorophyll or carbon dioxide or water, they are there to the extreme quantity and light is limited there, surely light will become the limiting factor which will be deciding the rate of photosynthesis. That is the explanation of Blackman's law of limiting factor. This implies that if more than one factor affects the chemical forces, then its rate will be determined by a factor which is nearest to its minimal value. It is a factor which directly affects the rate if its quantity is changed. Just now what I told you, in the case of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is to its highest level, water is also present to its maximum level, temperature is also there to its maximum level but if light is there which is acting as a limiting factor surely light will be deciding the rate of photosynthesis as it is a minimal value which will be deciding the rate of photosynthesis. Example, despite the presence of green leaf and optimal light and carbon dioxide conditions the plant may not photosynthesis if the temperature is very low. This leaf will start photosynthesizing if provided with the optimal temperature. Here we have taken the example for temperature. If light is there, carbon dioxide is there, everything is present there except the temperature which is needed there if it is less, surely temperature will be playing an important role there for deciding the rate of photosynthesis that is the Blackman's law of limiting factor it is very very important external factors which are important there which is influencing the photosynthesis that is light intensity temperature carbon dioxide concentration you can see here when low light condition is there clearly decreases the rate increasing light intensity will be having the highest effect and later on 
it will be becoming optima where no effect on the rate of photosynthesis is taking place there. You can see here yeah, rate of photosynthesis is taking place there but when uh, Point is cut there, and after that, if light intensity is more, also the rate of photosynthesis is not showing any effect there. Now, in the case of temperature, increasing or decreasing the optimum temperature results in lower rate of photosynthesis. If the temperature is increased there, or the temperature is decreased there, surely it will affect the rate of photosynthesis. So, optimum temperature is needed there for doing photosynthesis. Now, the next one is carbon dioxide concentration. No carbon dioxide condition decreases the photosynthetic rate. Increasing the concentration above the optimum has no effect on the rate of photosynthesis. So, at a given point, if carbon dioxide concentration is increasing again, what will happen? The rate of photosynthesis will not show any effect there, no change is taking place there. So again we can say there is an optimum percentage for the absorption of carbon dioxide and after that if carbon dioxide is absorbed also it will not show any difference in the rate of photosynthesis. From this it is shown that the rate of photosynthesis is depending on these factor if they are decreasing or increasing but if the optimum range is there and it is being it is being more than that that will not or never affect the rate of photosynthesis so here you can see again carbon dioxide concentration the rate of photosynthesis graph is given there and this is CO2 concentration increasing CO2 has no further effect the limiting factor must now be sunlight or temperature in the case of rate of photosynthesis carbon dioxide concentration is there if it is more there it will never have any effect of, on rate of photosynthesis so surely the rate of photosynthesis will be decided by some other factors such as light or temperature that is related to carbon dioxide concentration and related to light intensity you can see at no light intensity the rate of photosynthesis is directly proportional to the light intensity because as more light becomes available, more protein molecules can absorb light. So more electrons are excited leading to photolysis and photophosphorylation. Next, more ATP and NADPH are produced there. So the light independent reaction can occur at higher rates and more product will be produced there. Eventually, a maximum rate is reached and so increasing light intensity has no effect isn't it and this can be because of all available chlorophyll molecules are absorbing light or some other factors is now limiting factor in this we can see rate of photosynthesis is taking place but after uh, maximum reach we can see the graph is being saturated there it is the constant graph isn't it so from this we can say that the absorption of light will be taking place to its optimum after that if the absorption is taking place it will never affect the rate of photosynthesis here you can see the graph related to rate of photosynthesis understood huh? here the light is being, up, is being going to absorb and here the light is being absorbed and here what happened the saturation of absorption of light has taken place and this is the a, a point where the optimum light intensity is been absorbed by the plant and this decides the rate of photosynthesis. I think you have understood about the light intensity related to the rate of photosynthesis. It has been said that it is directly proportional. Understood? So my dear children, this part is again very, very important. Now related to temperature, it has been said that here photosynthesis limited by some carbon dioxide that is here temperature is okay but carbon dioxide is less isn't it so here you can see the graph is related to the photosynthesis that is rate of temperature of photosynthesis which is taking place it is limited because of carbon dioxide but here again you can see the graph in the case of second part 
photosynthesis is limited by temperature that is low concentration of carbon dioxide is there and with that low concentration of temperature is there so surely the rate of photosynthesis is affected there now again you can see the third area this is how the graph is going and in that high concentration of carbon dioxide is there but the low temperature is present there so low temperature is deciding the rate of photosynthesis and on the top you can see high concentration of carbon dioxide and high temperature surely the rate of photosynthesis is also affected there as in high concentration of carbon dioxide and high temperature surely the photosynthetic rate will be high if the concentration of carbon dioxide is less and the concentration of temperature is low surely the rate of photosynthesis will be less and surely it will affect the food production taking place in the green leaves of the plants i think you have understood about the temperature which is also a factor for the for influencing the rate of photosynthesis my dear children i think you would have understood the second part of chapter 9 photosynthesis very clearly and dear children as i told you please go through each and every part of this chapter which is very very important and understand it very nicely if you are not able to understand please give me a call and clarify those topic so that you will be able to understand it and you will be happy by saying this I'm going to wind the session, my dear children. This chapter is over here. Prepare the notes for the chapter, and always be happy. Take care.